All right, so it's Halloween, so I think it'd be really cool if we played some Mooka Myers to celebrate the occasion. Only one problem, though. I need to pick a build. So let's go ahead and see what I got going. Hmm. Let's do a speedy vault build. Yeah, let's 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 get some cool stuff going here. It's a pure anatomy, dark arrogance. Do unbound. Do it be a little tricky to use an unknown perk. Use unbound. That'd be a really, really cool one. Usually when I see speedy vault builds, they don't include unbound. Unbound's kind of like old news, but I think unbound's still pretty cool. Well, you know, now that I'm looking at it. I, you know, I'm supposed to be synergizing with Myers already fast vault speed, but if I get a map like Gideon or something that doesn't have a lot of windows, it's kind of like, kind of get screwed over. Also, I feel like the gins are really going to fly in the background here. Let's try and find something else. How about we do... Oh yeah, stun build. Let's do a stun build. Let's do enduring. Spirit Fury. Nemesis, give him some obliviousness. Uh... What last? Two can play. That's right. The check keeper. Oh, they get blinded when they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, this is going to be effective because I play an M1 killer. So I'm going to be getting stunned a lot, right? I can't really circumvent pounce too much. But I don't know. Once they hit the Spirit Fury, they're going to know what I'm doing and they're just going to free drop. Um, so I'm not going to be really getting stunned after that. Also, the gens are probably going to fly with this one, too. So that's like kind of a double whammy. Um, all right. Um, yeah, we can do we can do we can do an exposed um, build. All right. Um, God, gobbling up on top and I can head. If I could be so for real, I, I, I do not know how girls pull this off. I, I see so many girls do the cute bandana thing. And it looks great. I look like a pirate. I look like I'm about to make you go walk the plank. It does not look good. It does not look great, but it's got a little jack o on it. It's, it's Halloween, so there you go. See, we're doing it for the bit. Anyways, that is not what this video is about. It's not about my poor fashion choices. Uh, this video is actually about Gift of Pain and Leverage, at least on the surface, because Aunts in particular has uh, popularized this fairly new build that focuses on Leverage Gift of Pain, which is really, really good. It's kind of like spread like wildfire too. Like almost everyone, almost everyone is running this build. And it's to the point of, of ad nauseum. Like if you're playing Survivor, you've probably run into this almost every single game at this point. Uh, Aunts is a fairly huge creator. So a lot of people see their videos and that means that a lot of people, if Ot says this is good, they're also going to be running that, which uh, means you're going to be running this uh, pretty consistently uh, now. And that obviously creates a lot of frustration on the other end of things. Obviously, whenever there's something that's like incredibly frustrating in Dead by Daylight, we always start getting immediately into, is this too strong? Does this need adjusted? Does this need nerfed? Is it just something subjectively I dislike? Actually, that's just a joke because Dead by Daylight players usually don't introspect. They don't think about, hmm, maybe this is a subjective feeling and not an objective feeling. That's a joke, though. Moving on. <laughs> the point being is that I actually think Gift of Pain and Leverage is actually a fairly healthy step in the right direction. If it doesn't have to be those two perks in particular, I think it's a good philosophy step for behavior to take in terms of killer perks and builds. So let's go ahead and talk about it. I play Killer 7030, and that reflects a lot in this channel. Um, it's just the role I enjoy more. Usually when I'm playing Survivor, I play Survivor once a week on Twitch.tv slash the Mr. Headache, where I do open lobbies. Uh, or I'm doing uh, somebody's challenges with them off stream. I'm just hanging out with friends. But I do enjoy the role. I just don't enjoy it as much as Killer, especially from the stream perspective. It's a lot more entertaining to play Killer. There's a lot more going on. There's not a lot of just like just fiddling on a gen for a really long time. It's boring, right? It's not as fun to watch, so, and it's not as fun to play. So I, it kind of just, that's just how it falls in terms of, you know, content creation is that, hey, it's just more fun and more dynamic and more interesting to be the role where stuff's happening all the time instead of me taking these little breaks all the time. <laughs> but I do enjoy the role a lot. And one of the things I, I do enjoy about Survivor is the fact that I can run so many different builds to work with so many different playstyles, and the most important thing is like all these playstyles, they're not a throw to bring 
I can do an extra altruistic Keely build where I kind of dedicate myself to be the one to go get the hook saves, not have we'll make it, babysitter, fun stuff to try and get those survivor healed up quick, get them out of there, all this wonderful stuff. And it contributes to the game because those people, if they are healed up quick and they get found again by the killer, they can have longer chases, which is great. I could do kind of flashlight savey builds. Those haven't been as fun for a while since the flashlight buffer, but I used to be my bread and butter. I used to be a flashbang flashlight saver. And obviously, Having somebody get saved off the survivor or the survivors <laughs> saved off the killer's shoulder and brought, be brought back into the game to have another chase buys more time on people working on gens in the background. That actually helps. You can bring a full on chase build. You can run stuff like finesse, champion the light to blind at pallets, and an exhaustion perk and try to buy as much time as chase as possible so your fellow survivors can get the gens done. My point being is there's so many different play styles as survivor. But the difference being is that all of these play styles are helpful. All of these things are not a throw. You typically stand a chance of winning no matter what play style you pick as survivor. Some of them require a little bit more coordination and probably a, a team, Sabo being one of those. Saboing always helps, but you can definitely do it incorrectly. You can definitely do it wrong. <laughs> That's that that can get you into some trouble. But even then, like if you do that right, even that helps. The point being is even if you're not doing the direct objective on survivor of doing like a gen build with gen perks, like it's still helpful. It's still helpful to heal a lot. It's still helpful to save or have long chases. All these things contribute to the objective. So if you're not doing quote unquote the most optimal thing, it's still really, really helpful what you're doing, which is not reflected in killer playstyle and killer build variety. Usually with killer, if you're trying to run a build that's quote unquote fun or something like that, something to that extent, it usually means that you in a sense are kind of throwing. You're kind of giving up a lot of strength for the sake of doing some weird, funny gimmick. But in terms of consistency, you're probably not going to typically stand a chance to in most of your games. And this is the key word here is consistency. If you are in low MMR, you can probably run whatever and do well in most of your games. If you are playing a character you don't even play often, there is killer based MMR. So you, if you're playing a character you don't play very often, then you're probably gonna be fine running a silly build. But consistently, you can't run a silly build and continue to play the game long-term on, especially on one character, because then you're just kind of gonna eat a lot of losses because realistically, funny builds don't pull their weight. And it gets even more complicated because it, it, unlike Survivor, Survivor is essentially just one character with a bunch of different skins. So what one build works on one Survivor Survivor works on all survivors, which is not the case for Killer. Let's take the Xeomorph, for example, which is a character that I wrote the guide for and have a lot of expertise for. A lot of builds do not work on the Xenomorph. Stealth builds are very weak on the Xenomorph because the motion sensors track you on the flame turrets for 41 meters, which is bigger than Wesker's Terradius, which is very intense. And it does track you in the tunnels as well. So stealth isn't as good on that character. Um, or read and info isn't as good on that character because you can track people so naturally through the tunnels. So that you don't it'd be a little redundant to run info you don't run stun perks because you have the tail attack which can hit over and around pallets so like it's kind of redundant or, or almost pointless i would say to run stun perks on that character uh it's just there's just a lot of things that don't gel with the xenomorph they kind of almost suffer from success is they either have it covered or just don't encounter the situations of what we consider to be more fun builds so what do you end up running you end up running pain res pop eruption etc because it's the only things that really work on you <laughs> especially if we were playing it since we started off this video with myers if you're playing like a stun build on myers people are going to catch on people are going to catch on that you're trying to feed spirit fury and they're going to start pre-dropping and once they start pre-dropping you're kind of just and just host free dropping is already extremely strong against Myers, and then you're going to be encouraging it by running Spirit Fury. And if that's your whole build, if that's what your entire build is tailored around, is getting that stun and they stop doing it, guns are going to start flying in the background. That's just the nature of the game. I think that's where a lot of killer frustrations come in is that, like, we don't want to win every single game. There are definitely a lot of those that are like that. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of them. There are people that flock to this game just to play the, that kind of play style, but I already made that video. <laughs> a lot of us don't want to run the most meta things all the time. It's just that like the options that are the alternatives, like they, it goes from like being really oppressive to just sucking. <laughs> like there's like the DBD is really for killer builds and playstyles, really lacking this kind of like middle ground of, yeah, you stand a chance of winning, but it's not the most optimal thing. And I think that's why I like the gift of pain leverage thing coming into uh, to the public eye, because it is kind of something that's just different and good enough. But, it, you know, if you're not stacking it with two other slowdown, it's not going to play the game for you. I feel like that's what anti-heal used to do back in the day was that was anti-heal was something that was not the most meta thing you could possibly run.
but it was good and it was always great. That's why so many killer add-ons that did the Mangled and Hemorrhage were usually rated fairly well on most add-on tier lists because while it was probably not the killer's most potent add-on they could be running, it was always just guaranteed value, right? But then behavior started making slow sweeping changes over time to make anti-heal weaker and weaker. They buffed survivor perks like resurgence to where survivors can just heal off hook in like two seconds. They timed mangled and hemorrhage. So it used to be permanent. It used to just kind of be until you were healed up, you suffered hang on a mangled and hemorrhage. But now it's time. So even if you, you know, catch somebody and interrupt them later on, the timer's gone so they can just heal normally. They made it a behavior for whatever reason, made that concerted uh, effort to try and remove anti heal as something that was effective from the game, probably because uh, survivors found it boring because it was just kind of a slow red bar without much interactivity. But on the flip side, that removed that kind of cozy middle zone of variety for killer where I want to stand a chance of winning. So I'm going to run this, but I don't want to run like quad slowdown, <laughs> which is something that I would argue survivors hate worse. Uh, so you kind of played yourself. And I think to give behavior credit where credit's due, they did finally nerf distortion, which is another big proponent of this because aura builds used to be another fun but effective uh, build that was not the most meta thing, but helped a lot, especially on characters like uh, Huntress where like you can get hatchet snipes and stuff with that, but you couldn't run that because one perk blocked almost all of the aura perks in the game, which was really frustrating and annoying. So that is finally coming back into fruition for some killers at this point, because finally that perk is in a fair place. <laughs> But overall, I still feel like DBD is extremely lacking when it comes to that middle zone of variety for killer and killer play styles. And leverage and Gift of Pain adding that kind of like anti-heal kind of like really strong perk combo back into the game is a good direction because <laughs> that's why so many people got so mad when they started nerfing Grim Embrace, Deadlock and stuff like that because the other options aren't there. Like, of course, there's going to be the baby whiners who just want to steamroll every single team who are mad that their meta perks that they use to autopilot are being nerfed. Those people do exist. But there's a lot of us that just like, where do we go after this? There is nothing else after that for so many different characters, so many different builds where like, we, we don't want to just get steamrolled in return. And if you're taking away the tools that defend ourselves from getting steamrolled and everything else that's in the middling zone is bad, we're just gonna have a bad time and nobody wants to have a bad time. We just, most players, I feel like, just want to last long enough in the game to have a good match. Because doing the, or delaying the objective as efficiently as possible is the name of the game of Dead by Daylight. So if you go into a game and you don't bring the tools to, to defend yourself against Gen Rush, then you, you are just going to have a quick game that's really sad and miserable. Even if you lose, but you bring a little bit of slowdown, you get to have a long, fruitful game. So that's fulfilling and that's fun. But people just want to stand a chance. That's all they really want. They don't want to win every single game. They just want to stand a chance. And currently with Killer, it's all in or all out, it feels like. It's either you, you, you run the slowdown and, and always consistently stand a chance or you don't. And then you're kind of just, you know, banking on a lot of uh, inconsistent variables. <laughs> so I, I do like Leverage Gift of Pain overall. Not specifically the combo, but what it means is that we're okay with having variety when it comes to different play styles as killer. It's not all just me hooked to the guy and me destroy the gen. <laughs> like there is gonna be more to the role than just doing that in terms of meta. And that's, that's gonna, I feel like help health-wise overall when killers aren't all playing the same way because there's not really a whole lot of other options. And if we could make, if we could make the killer role in terms of play styles and builds just as varied as the survivor end with like healing, with chasing, with save builds. Like I feel like people enjoy the game more, people have better time, I think it'll be better for the game overall. Yeah, TLDR, if I've been a little bit too rambly with this, which always happens, but that's what you're here for if you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Is that while Gift of Pain and Leverage, I, I, I like it just at least right now, it might be too strong. Overall, I like the direction that Killer is getting more variety in terms of play styles that are great, but aren't the most meta thing in the universe. Because if there was just more of that around, like there is on the survivor end, I feel like the game would be healthier overall. So, hope we get more stuff like that. Yeah, how do you feel about the whole Gift of Pain leverage situation? And what do you think would be a healthier direction when it comes to killer play styles and builds for the future of Dead by Daylight? Let me know down in the comments below. Building that. That's going to be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you so much for spending part of your day with me. It means a lot. This is mostly built and geared as comfort content for you to listen to over lunch or on break. So thank you for spending part of your day with me. I really, really appreciate it. And if you want to see more of this, make sure you like and subscribe. That way this stuff actually shows up on your feed more often. But on that, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. But if I do not, 
I'll see you when I see you, friends. Goodbye.